Hello and welcome everyone, Lana here, and today I've got a kind of first look, overview and impressions video for Rome Total War. Now some of you guys are thinking, hang on, didn't that come out ages ago? Why are you covering the game now? I mean, you've already done videos on it and campaigns and stuff. And um, well, this is not Rome Total War for the PC. This is Rome Total War for the iPad. So as you can see, with that little webcam that I've just brought on there, I'll probably bring it um, in and out as we go through this kind of first look, just so I can show you the gesture controls. Um, I am probably going to do a separate kind of just control video focusing on battles. I will show you guys a battle in this video, but I'll probably do a controls video um, next week for you guys. Also, if there are any other videos you'd like to see from the Rome Total War iPad version, then do let me know if there's anything, questions you have that you'd like answered, any things you'd like me to try out, um, you know, further kind of guess, uh, in-depth kind of battles to see how well you can actually adapt to the touch controls and all that, then feel free to request that down below in the comment section. I'll also be looking to live stream this next week as well, so keep an eye on my social media, Facebook and Twitter. I should say big thanks to Feral Interactive for um, sending me a, a couple of builds over the last few weeks now actually to try out, share some feedback and just see how Rome Total War has been transitioned onto iPad. And this isn't um, like a cut down version, this is the full game. Um, that you know was available on PC. Um, obviously, there's a few tweaks and changes to the UI. Um, the graphics, actually, in most cases for the UI, have actually been sharpened for obviously the Retina display. So things may not necessarily transition that well into this YouTube video. But when you're actually looking at it, um, you know, in your hands, everything is very sharp and very clear. So um, we're going to take a look at. Um, the game, we're just going to jump on in and see how things go. Obviously, you've got the uh, the webcam over here. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. And we've got it all up on screen, so we can see kind of the gesture controls that I'll be using as we go through. But let's just hide that webcam for a moment while we just take a look at all the various options we have. Just taking a look at options right now, um, you have audio options and you have the camera settings for restricting camera. Now, you will see, obviously, there's no graphics options. Um, the iPads that are supported for this game because you will need a fairly powerful iPad um, to run this this game. Um, you'll either need an iPad um, Mini 2, Mini 3, Mini 4, um, iPad Air 1, iPad Air 2 or the 9.7 inch iPad Pro which is what I'm using today or the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. You'll also need um, just, uh, just under 4 gig of space to install and they have announced the prices of this game as well. And I, this is one thing that I was super, um, uh, not critical of, but I was, I was, I was very interested in seeing how they price this because you can get Rome Total War, I think, for like seven or eight pounds on Steam anyway. So if they priced it higher than that, then you'd be like, well, I could, I could just play it on my PC because you know I've already got a PC. So I think the pricing, which is nine dollars and ninety nine cents, or nine euros and ninety nine cents, or seven pounds and ninety nine pence, is pretty reasonable. Um, so yeah, those are my thoughts and kind of on that. Um, obviously, as I said, using the nine point seven inch iPad Pro, I do have an iPad Air, and if you would like me to do a comparison video to show the differences in graphical settings as such, that you can see um, unit size differences and all that, and just how the game runs on an iPad Air one first generation compared to the 9.7 inch iPad Pro that I'm now using, then feel free to let me know down in the comment section. That's something I do have planned for uh, for next week as well. There'll be more videos of this as we go through. Um, maybe even like a live stream let's play as I mentioned before. So we have all the options up here that we need. Let's go to new game. We have the choice for an imperial campaign, historical battles, prologue, which will run you through um, you know, tutorial and getting used to to the game and obviously those touch controls as well. It was quite useful actually. Um, it was pretty solid. It's the same um, tutorial that you get in the PC game, just with a lot of obviously the touch control focus added in. You've got quick battle and custom battle. So again, to custom battle, you can see you, know, you can choose cities, grassy flatlands. You know, all the all the maps are there that you would expect. You've got last man standing, scored resolution. And there is no multiplayer on this, it is just single player. I don't know if multiplayer was ever something they, they contemplated or just, you know, server-wise and lag or trying to set something up like that. I don't know if that's just not even possible at all. Um, you know, 
I, 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 I doubt we'll see multiplayer. Maybe, maybe um, Feral will get back to me though and say perhaps it's something they're looking into in the future. But this is a single player experience. It is Total War on the go on an iPad, but it is the full Rome Total War experience. So you can set your difficulty there, show your advanced conditions, have arcade style battles and what have you. Then you go forward to the next screen, you choose your faction. Obviously there's plenty of factions to choose from here in the custom battles and what have you. You can go forward, you can choose all your units, pop them in, as you would on PC. You can give them veterancy, give them armor upgrades, um, you can even, I think that is, oh you can say presets if you want to as well. I think there's one that just lets the your AI choose your um, units for you so you can see here a rough idea of the unit size I believe this is on the iPad Pro this is the large unit size I think on my iPad Air it was the medium unit size there as I said there's no option to choose that but um, you can uh, obviously with a more powerful iPad it is going to run at those higher settings it is all locked away though the settings you cannot tweak that um, yourself um, it would be interesting to see if they did an, an Android version of this game at some point in the future. I don't know if that's the plan or not. Um, but if they did, then I would imagine the Android version will probably actually have selectable graphics options just because there's such a wide variety of Android tablets out there. Um, but I guess we'd have to wait and see for that. Yeah, so for the iPad Pro, it seems to run on large unit size. It doesn't seem like there's any iPad that's running it on huge. I just um, guess because of kind of the screen resolution of the iPad, the retina, the retina display, and obviously because at the end of the day it is an iPad and not a PC, um, large is kind of the kind of the highest they could push the unit scale um, while still kind of maintaining solid performance. And I, I don't have an FPS counter or anything like that that I can enable, but from what I've seen, it does kind of feel it feels faster than 30 FPS. I don't know if it's running at solid 60 all the time, but everything seems pretty smooth and fluid. I should say if anything doesn't seem that smooth and fluid. Um, I was having a bit of a problem with the capture card I'm actually using to record this, so that may well be the case. Um, I should have also said I'll probably throw this up at the start of the video as well as an annotation, but there are timestamps where you can jump to various points of the video if you're not interested in seeing all this menu stuff at the start here, but I wanted to give a kind of thorough run through of the game and share my thoughts so far as I've been doing already. So these are the factions that we have to play, and in fact these are all the unlocked factions. I don't know if there will be more added in or anything like that, or if... I'm just trying to think if there are any other factions that are missing here. Probably, probably go and compare the, the PC version to this, but if anyone spots, let me know. If anyone would like me to do kind of like, I don't know, like a direct PC to iPad comparison, perhaps even looking at graphics and seeing stuff like that, then feel free to let me know as well. Again, I'm very open to suggestions for content that you guys would like to see from this. Um, I should say, obviously, again, this is like a test build. Um, so it's it's not 100%, I guess, the final build, but it's probably pretty close to it. They're just kind of doing extra polishing and things like that at the moment, and just like little basic tweaks and what have you. Um, so yeah, these are the basic actions you have. I should actually say, I'm just going to tab out of the iPad, uh, out of the, the app right now. Just go to settings, because when you if you decide to get this yourself, you will want to come to your settings, scroll all the way down to the bottom, go to Rome Total War. I don't know if it's gold edition, it'll be labeled as that. Um, and you have... Um, a few options here. Obviously, display marker when tap slash gesture is performed is what I have enabled today, just to show you guys um, kind of where I'm where I'm pressing on the screen. That makes it easier. But you also have this unlock all factions. So I've got that enabled. So if we just go back up to the game here, um, these are all the factions that came available at the start. We just had the Julii, Brutii, and Scipii, and I assume you would unlock the other factions as you would in the PC version which is by killing the other faction and then you unlock them which I always enjoyed fun way of kind of expanding your game from the start but um, yeah these seem to be all the factions that are in there at the moment so we have what 11 factions Julii, Brutii, Scipii, we have Egypt, the Lucid Empire, Carthage, Parthia, Gaul, Germania, uh, Britannia and uh, the Greek cities so um, we'll just jump on into one and just show you guys kind of the start and then I've actually got a Brutei eye campaign which I'm like maybe I should what, 20 30 turns in I've expanded out a little bit and we'll have a we'll have a battle with that as well I'll also probably try and load up a massive battle at the end a full like 20 versus 20 stack But as you can see by the screen it is the the same experience you would be expecting from the PC version um, You have the difficulty levels you can set 
battle and campaign, arcade style battles you can have enabled or not, manage all settlements, follow AI characters, no battle time limit, even a short campaign as well, you can have your advice level at uh, high and what have you, we'll just whack it down to medium at the moment and um, we will we'll jump in to see how Britannia starts. Before my grandfather's grandfather was born, this was our land. These are good places. Our gods live here, in the trees and rivers. They watch over us. We are happy. We hunt. We love. We have families, homes, a good life. But sometimes we must fight. The Romans disturb the gods. They burn the forests. They take what is ours, wives, children, land. And the Romans talk of how they will help us and protect us. They put us to sleep with golden promises. When we wake, all we had is gone, stolen. They take our sons and turn them into little Romans. Ha! So we fight to keep what is ours. What must stay ours? There can be no peace. No peace with Romans, men of stone and iron and lies. There can be only war. So there we go, that intro there. I believe they're using the original intro video, so I don't think they've been changed uh, in any way, shape, or form. Or kind of made HD. I don't know if that's even possible for them to do. But, um... I think Victoria is talking to us right now. Or is that the, the game volume? I can't hear because I'm recording this um, separately. So I can't hear anything that's going on right now. But I'll assume we have our advisor up here. It's Victoria. She's our advisor through the world of Total War. If we need any help, you just tap on her face. So you have various bits here. You've got the show me how. And that will show you all the various panels that you can interact with. That's all good. You have all your various summary panels. You have your um, currency, your, your money panel, so you can see how much money your faction has. Plays the current date and season at the top right. You have your end turn button on the far right. And you have your faction summary screen, which is how you access kind of all the, um, all the various bits and pieces that you'll need to do that aren't on the campaign map directly. So obviously you'll build cities, you'll recruit units, you'll recruit agents, you'll move units, you'll fight, you know, move to attack from the campaign map. But things like diplomacy, checking the Senate, and things like that, you'll all do through the faction summary screen, which I'll show you in a bit. Scrolling off to the right, and you can tap all of these again. Settlement, so building upgrades, recruiting units, agents, uh, and your fleets and navy screen. And your buildings will also show up in the bottom panel as well. Uh, well, your buildings, units, and agents will show up along the bottom as well. I'll show you all that in a bit. So, just a uh, first little bit here. Again, this is just what you'll get at the start of each campaign. Just to give you guys some idea of what to do and how to control. So, we have all the various gesture commands. And actually, if I re-enable the, uh, the webcam at this point, you're not really missing anything out on that little corner. We've still got Victoria's face there. That's all good. So you can see how you can draw a path, move, do attack. Touch controls on the campaign map are very um, very intuitive, works very easily. I mean, there's, there's not a lot control-wise you need to do on the campaign map. You know, it's drag over to where you want to move or drag and attack that army there. And it's quite simple. It works very easily and it's very easy to control um, from a touchscreen um, control setup. Um, instead of keyboard and mouse. Yeah, very easy to move around. In fact, I actually quite prefer the campaign map on touchscreen now as keyboard and mouse. Battles, I'm still going to need a lot more time because um, all those years of keyboard and mouse transitioning over um, to um, touch controls is, is still a bit of kind of a shock to the system, but they do work and you can do everything you need to do and that you could do on PC there is a touch control for it that I found so far. So yeah, just showing you about how you can board. You know, just a basic tutorial there. As I said, you can do the prologue campaign, and then you're all good. Um, so yeah, let's just run through everything you need to know there. The show me how, the locate button, the pause button, 
Um, this will just bring up your menu when we're not on this first tutorial bit. Close that down. Turn to game. So here we are now on the campaign. We should actually, I think, if we scroll the game options there, what have you yet. So we are now on the campaign map, and as you can see from the, the webcam, just using one finger to just move around. Control is very easy, very responsive. And again, the game feels very fluid um, on this iPad Pro. On my iPad Air, I definitely notice a difference between my iPad Air first generation and this. Um, so they have certainly utilized the more powerful hardware of the, the higher end iPads. Um, but I was still able to enjoy the experience on the iPad Air. And I get, uh, again, as I said, if you guys would like me to do a comparison video to how this performs, then feel free to let me know. Um, versus iPad Air versus first generation versus um, iPad Pro 9.7 inch. So, campaign map. We're all familiar with it. Basic controls. One finger just to move around. Two fingers. Pinch. And zoom. And uh, those are the basics. If you want to get to kind of the menu to save, use three fingers. Press them down on the screen and pull down. And you get the menu. You can access the manual. We'll show you some various controls and little tool tips against everything there. They've done as much as possible, it would seem, to kind of cram as much stuff on the screen without taking up lots of the screen, as it were, if that makes any sense. So again, yeah, three fingers, you pull down, you can load and you can save. Options, manuals, resume game, quick game. That'll just take you back to the main menu. There we go. Um, something I... Also have just checked out as well, the Rome shell is still in here, so you can put in kind of commands for more money, spawning units, finishing um, uh, construction in a settlement, or finish recruitment, if you want to do that. And you do that by pressing, sorry, this is not going to work well on the webcam, but the top left and top right of the screen at the same time, and then the Rome shell pops up. I'll just hide the webcam so you can see that. There you go, so you've got Rome shell there, you can type in, you know, all the various um, kind of okay, like cheats for money or, you know, to process things in settlements, finish things quickly. Um, you can also, if anything weird happens with the UI, you, you can type in reload underscore UI and that will reload the UI if anything um, occurs there. So that's how you get the Rome shell up. If you want to get rid of it, just tap the keyboard button and it will go away. Bring that webcam up again. One thing I do want to... I don't know if they were planning on implementing it anyway, but it was a bit of feedback that I gave them. And in the next build they sent back, it had actually been implemented. So I kind of feel like quite proud that I, this kind of little bit of feedback that I, that I gave kind of came in. Which was that originally, if you tapped the um, finances, the, the, the denarii at the top... Um, it wouldn't actually take you to the, the finance screen. I thought that would just be a great little shortcut. To previously get to it, you had to go through the faction panel bottom right, which again, I'll show you in a minute. But yeah, if we tap on the money, we instantly come through to the financial screen. You've got all your financials there, all your expenditure, your income. You can see how much you're earning per turn. You can just tap that way. You can also access that by tapping the bottom right, although the webcam's not going to show that unless I just move it up a bit. So bottom left. Tap the faction window, or double tap the faction window, I should say. And then you come onto this screen, which you can now see. So I'm just going to get rid of the webcam while we go through this screen, take a look at it all. Um, so the first screen that we have for Britannia is um, seeing our diplomacy screen. You can just roll up on the right hand side to see all the information that is provided there allies, enemies, and protectorates. Pretty basic. Obviously, in this Total War game, it's back to diplomat agents to do all your diplomacy, so no fancy all-built-in diplomacy screen that we're used to from more recent Total Wars. And you have finance there that you can access via the, the coins. Diplomacy from the Olive Branch. Family Tree is also in. You can choose your faction heir and all that jazz. Find new faction heirs. You can also hit the magnifying glass to zoom to character and to find out where they are. You can see faction information and you can set your auto manage policies as well if you'd like to. You can also see a graph how other factions are doing. Obviously it's the first turn so it's not got any data in there to collect yet. We've got faction information, all that jazz, victory conditions are there as well. And we've also then got an overview of all your military forces. You can also take a look at your agents from here. You can also take a look at your cities all at a glance. So again, as I said, I feel they've, they've done this really well that it's all located through that kind of faction um, icon that you just double tap from the campaign map and it brings you up here 
And it, yeah, it just has all the information from the base game. I think they've been really, um, really smart about how they've utilized the screen space. Because when we actually come down to the, the campaign map, you know, there's a bit at the bottom and a bit at the top. I, I don't know, like, quick off the top of my head, maybe like... Um... Like an like a tenth, one tenth at the bottom, or maybe nearly two tenths at the bottom, and just one tenth at the top is kind of just taken up. But I say that it's taken up. It's it's done in a way that the original PC game also kind of utilized. In fact, I think actually this UI might be actually smaller um, than the original uh, PC UI because I think the unit bar was much larger and all that. So you've actually got more space to interact even though you've got a smaller screen. So I think the way they've done it, presented the data, it looks pretty well. Obviously, like, unit cards are quite small down here, but it's got to fit a full 20 stack along there because it won't, like, jump up a row or anything like that. But I think that's pretty good. Um, if we just zoom on in here on the map, oh, grab some units so we can see because we're on the, on the city there. So let's just grab these guys by tapping on them all. If I wanted to deselect them, tap this button on the far right. Um... Over here, I'm just going to pop the, the webcam back up now, although you probably can't see that button on the far right. Green. Once we've got to reposition it. So it's this button over here on the right. You just tap it and it deselects all your units that you've selected. Again, just select them all. Drag them. To move them across the campaign map. Nice and easy. Simple to do. And I think it works. It works pretty well. So again, just kind of pinching to zoom in and out. Very easy, basic controls. But you've got... Let's take a look at settlements now. Let's double tap to get into all of these uh, from the campaign map. So here is the settlement panel. You can see you've got all the various building plots over on the left. Like that webcam so you guys can see. You have your income, your public order all displayed. Um, you can set your tax rate. recruit units from that tab you can uh, repair buildings with this third button here and you can retrain units with the fourth one along as well you can also see settlement uh, population growth public order and all that jazz you can also set it to be um, I think that's the capital button and change capital I think Set this to be the faction's capital, yeah. So you can use that, set it to be the faction's capital if you want. I think capitals, they have to have like a certain level of um, population, don't they, to be set or something like that. But yeah, that's the set it as your capital if you want to. Again, you can recruit units by tapping on that banner if you want to as well. This button over here will actually allow you to exchange traits between... Um, generals if you want to so let's just on this army here um, can I select him there and I, I need two generals so we've got mercenaries here as well I should mention um, but yeah if we if we bring this guy up to this army here we're gonna merge him in and you can just tap on the screen and it will act as if you press spacebar so press here so we've brought up the recruitment screen when we're outside of a settlement. Obviously, that has the mercenary panel, so we can hire mercenaries if we want to. At the coins, the hire, and then the tick. You can also build watchtowers and forts from here as well. So we can whack our watchtower in there, press the tick, got ourselves a watchtower. But anyway, this button here will actually allow you to switch um, kind of um, retainers between your various generals if you'd like to. Which is pretty cool, and I quite like that, that it's all, again, it's all built in there. All the various bits you could do before, dragging traits over between characters, you can do here. So we've also got our messages from end turn, all throwing up here. They come up on a big main screen, and if you want to get rid of them from the left-hand side, they're obviously, we've all read them now. And they will still be greyed out there, so if you actually want to get rid of them, you can hit the uh, three scrolls with the burn, with the flames on, or you can just hit the flame one by one single scroll and you'll delete the messages one by one but if you want to keep a message there for a little while it's all available there obviously the spy you can do that basics it's all good um got his various screen there 
And if you want to find out about your spy, so you want to find out about your character, tap and hold on him, you'll get your character details as well. Um, same goes for when you're in settlement. If you want to find out about the trader, I've just obviously one tap on the is that a trader actually. Don't even know. So it is a trader. So what I've just done there actually, because I couldn't tell what that building was, just at a glance. I'm actually awkwardly trying to view the iPad without getting myself in shot and all that as well. <laughs> Not the best setup that I've got here. But um, if you want to find out what a building is, find out its specific details. Tap and hold on it, and it will then load up on the right-hand screen. And I'll just show you guys with the uh, webcam enabled there. So the wooden, the wooden palisade, press down and hold on it, and now the stockade um, shows up there. So you can just easily flick through all these. Obviously, just one tap to build them. Starts queuing them up. Same with units. Easily tap them in as well. So yeah. Good and nice and easy to go. Now something else I do want to show you guys now as well, which I absolutely love that they've included this. I'm not sure, you know, if if it's actually that useful, it's just nice that it's in there, is this. And I'm hoping many people will be quite happy to see that this has been included in the, in the iPad kind of, I guess, port of this game, which is that you can go in and view your city. Um, obviously, normally you'd only be able to view your city when it's being attacked or you're defending it. But this is the 3D view of your settlement, which you had in the original PC title. Um, but you can now just explore, explore your city. So There's actually a good way of just showing you how battle maps work before we get into a battle later, because I'll be busy explaining how you know how to command your units and all that. But if we just move on round again, a single um, finger will just allow you to move around the screen. And zoom in, a few fingers, or, or pinch zoom, zoom out, and we can also rotate by twisting. I sometimes end up doing this. Two fingers, you just twist them around, and you can spin the view around. So if we zoom out to maximum, which is to here, we can see our settlement fly around. We can see all the villagers going about their daily business. It just there they are going to the meeting stone. So. Graphically, this looks, to me, just as good, if not slightly sharper. I think that might just be due to the retina screen um, on the iPad anyway, the original graphics. And obviously, this isn't a good representation necessarily of how well the game runs, but we're flying around this city really nice and easily. So, yeah. So, just double tapping on the screen there, a little X comes up. I'm going to tap it, and we come back from the 3D view of the city. So I, I love that that's in there. Um, I don't know what you guys ever used it for. I just used to go and check out my cities when I'd fully upgraded them or just built a new stockade or something like that. So now I'm going to actually um, show you guys a battle. I'm going to go into my Brutii campaign and then we'll do an even larger one. Um, I should say over here you've got the the map, which has three, uh, three stages. The first stage is like this, where you just see the guy holding the globe on his back. Tap it once and you get the, the mini-map which you can leave up. And then tap it again and you get the full screen map which you can then just instantly, if you've got a large empire you may want to just quickly jump around your empire like this. It's quite nice and easy to do. You can tap it there. And it's all good. line around the map. Right, so close that map down. Um, I think, as I said, I've covered everything that's on here. Obviously, with Rome, you'll get the Senate screen, which I'll show you in my Brutii campaign. But three fingers, pull down, load my game. Uh, I'm going to load up Brutii 2 and load that up straight away and pop on over to that one. I don't know how big the saves are, but I wouldn't imagine they're that big. So, should still have reasonable space. Just zoom out. I've just started off this Brutii campaign. Um, a little ways in right now. In fact, if we go to the... I'm just trying to think. Faction. Is... This one here, we should see... Um, we don't have turns anywhere. Okay, that's interesting. Oh, no, here we go. We can see turns from here. So we're on turn 20... 
24, 25? There must be it somewhere else, I'm sure. Maybe not. Battles won, 26. Battles lost, 8. Yeah. We just need to see if there's a turn counter somewhere, if that's something they're adding in, perhaps. Um, even if it was just like a little number, I guess, hovering up above the end turn. But I should say the end turn button as well. Um, obviously, you just tap it once, and then tap it again, and you'll end turn. Going through the end turn phase actually pretty fast. I didn't seem to notice it being too slow on the iPad Air either. It seemed to go through pretty quickly. And obviously I've got follow AI characters enabled, so we can go through all of that. So yeah, there we go. That is all the various bits and pieces there. Um, I actually am going to reload though, because we want to go and attack the rebels. And we need to be on the previous turn to do that, because we've now moved far too far away with my army. But yeah, loading is, is pretty pretty quick. You'll see when we go into a battle in a minute as well. But yeah, so far, as you can see, the fluidity, and I hope this comes across in the video, but it's it seems to be running really well. Really impressed at how well this is running. Um, so yeah, I just said, before we fight this battle, because then we'll probably go and do a custom battle with larger, larger army on it, and I'll probably be all over the place, but I'll get there. Um, with Rome, with the Roman families, you have the SPQR screen, which allows you to see your, your Senate policies and all that. So you can see how the Senate feels about the various um, factions and sort of their course of action that they would suggest. You have that. You also have your missions from the Senate. And you can zoom to settlement, take Patavium. Um, obviously your diplomacy and all that. But um, yes, um, where is it here? Senate standing the people. So you've got the, between the Senate and the people. So you've all got all that in. And you've also got the Senate officials and all the offices that your faction holds as well. So all of that is in. So, when I get to the battle, I wonder how many of you will have skipped forward just to see this. Um, so let's go through and attack. Nice. Brutii army here. General speeches are in, guys, as well. We'll see that. They're probably going to retreat, I would imagine. May have to. Oh no, we can get them this turn. Good. So yeah, it's just. Oh no, we can't actually. I think it's next turn. So yeah, just to attack, it's just you just drag one finger on the mouse over to the unit and hit the hit the tick button. That will come up pretty much every time. Okay, so we are going to have to end turn now. I'm gonna tap on the screen, which acts as I said like spacebar to speed up all unit movement. So here we go. Next turn we have all of our notifications and various bits and pieces. Marriage going on and the end of turn report. We can just scroll through. We can see our income, expenditure, all that jazz. I don't need those messages anymore, thank you. I'm going to burn them all. Right, let's go kill these rebels. So move on with the attack. Strike. Going to run away. Not today. Death comes for you, rebels. So, here's the battle screen. Obviously, we do massively outnumber them. We've got auto-resolve on the far right. Fight manually or retreat. We're going to jump on in and fight. And uh, enjoy the general's speech when we get in. Um, but yeah, as you'll see here. Pretty fast with the loading. Again, I will try and do something like a comparison between this and the iPad Air to see how well... I have won great renown through leading men to victory. I see no reason to change the habits of a lifetime today. Over there stand the rebel slaves. They are braver and more worthy than men of their type have any right to be. They have been led here by strutting fools and blustering morons. Now they will pay the price. The count of our warriors is vastly greater than theirs, so unless we fight like old women or idiots, victory is certain. They will, unless completely unthinking, try to use the woods to screen some of their troops. 
Many times I have faced this enemy, and many times I have beaten them. Today, when we win, this victory will be yours as much as mine. So, let your battle cry be, victory! Victory and glory to Rome! So, uh, there we go. General speech, we can obviously tap wait if we want to for a better day or a worse day, but it's, I think it's summer right now, so all the days are lovely. Let's start deployment. Sorry if the kind of pans and stuff in this don't seem as smooth. You'll probably be able to see the comparison between the webcam and what's actually on screen. I think my capture card, it doesn't completely like recording from iPad, but um, yeah, I like using two hands to control, but I realize I may obstruct the webcam view a little bit, so I'm going to try and do my best. One thing I do find already is that I'm nowhere near as sharp with um, kind of just my speed of play at the moment. But I think that's something I just need to spend more time just actually fighting these battles um, to get used to. So as you can see, just using kind of the basic gestures I've talked about before. Single, um, you know, finger on the screen in any direction will just move it around as long as you're not selecting a unit. Two fingers to pinch, zoom in and out. And two fingers to twist motion on the screen. Or you can use any combination. Finger and thumb, two fingers, whatever you want to do. You can do it. Now, looking at this screen, you guys are thinking, oh, right, okay, are there any group formations or anything like that? Now, actually, I stumbled across this initially, kind of by accident. But they do have group formations. Meaning, I can select all my Hestati along the bottom here. There we go, they were selected, so I want them all together in a group. Tap the faction icon here, and I tack, um, I tack, I press the um, banners here, the three little banners icon, and that instantly groups them. So they are now group one. Now there isn't obviously, you know, numbers that you can press up to bring that up, but you can obviously just tap the the one icon above all those group units, and it will. Load up. I realise that the webcam at the moment isn't focusing as much as I would like and it's getting a lot of kind of glare. So my apologies for that, but I thought it might still be useful to show comparison there. So if we want to place them forward, we can just tap there. If we want to spread them out, you can do it like so, with two fingers, tap from the left and drag to the right, and they'll be in a single formation. Because they're in a group, they're actually locked to their current formation. So if we ungroup them for a minute then we can actually change the depth of the ranks of those units if we want. We can drag them all the way over to the right and then I'm going to group them again so then I'll be kind of locked into that formation. Tap them there. Uh, and then deselect all the units by that button over on the right hand side, bottom right. You can also select units um, in another way which is pressing and holding on the screen until the a little, this little blue um, dot appears, and then you just go and you move around, you select around the units you want, and then you select them. So it's quite good in the heat of the moment of battle. Um, if you want to grab a couple of units, you can just lasso um, around a couple. Uh, obviously, you can use that unit panel down at the bottom. So I've got my two cavalry selected. I quite like the spacing that they've got, so I'm just going to group them up and put them over to the left-hand side. So let's deselect them. Let's grab my Velites. Tap them over here, spread them out a bit more, that's as far as I'll go, group them up, whack them in front, they've got skirmish formation enabled down here, I'm going to actually select my Astarte and put them into guard mode, and we're going to grab, uh, actually deselect everything so I don't want to group the wrong ones, grab my two generals, group them, whack them over here, actually ungroup them and just spread them out, there we go, now we'll group them, and pop them over there. Deselect everything. Start the battle. So if we tap our little map up here, we can see um, the mini map again. It's hidden by default again because it would take up a fair little bit of the screen. So it's there when you want it. You've got this bigger map mode as well. You can actually rotate from up here as well. Change your viewpoint. You can't give like unit commands. As far as I know, although actually I could try. Oh no. Let the cavalry. Can I? Oh, no, that'll just pan the camera there. Okay, I was wondering if maybe you could actually move them there. So, I have actually just given a move command, though, to the, my cavalry. So, they are going to move up here. So, the enemy is up over here. 
See them? Got mercenaries, I believe, as well. Rebels. So you all get the unit descriptions of what you're what you're looking at, what you're hovering over up here. Just to the right of the balance of power, which I think you can tap on. Yes, and it will show you your percentage of allies killed and percentage of enemies killed as well, which is quite nice. Just double tap on my unit here. We'll fly on back. Slowly marching forward. I don't think there actually is a follow unit camera as such, which I wouldn't have minded seeing. Um, but double tap just brings you up to that unit, follows them for a little bit, and then stops. Uh, but yeah, let's get my let's get my units moving here. So we want these guys all up here to face the enemy. So let's bring the Hastati up. Oh, position them like so. They're going to walk by default. You can tell them to run. Just tapping the walk run icon on the bottom left. The cavalry. Place them over on the flanks over there. We definitely want them running up there. And my skirmishers finally. Pop them in front of them. You obviously don't get the... I haven't found a way of seeing where your units are going. I'm, I'm trying to tap and hold. No, that doesn't do it. I don't think there is a command in here for that. And that is actually a shortcut to your general, which is quite useful under this screen. You can set formations as well. Select multiple units. There are formation buttons all programmed in. You've got loose formation. You've got fire at will. Everything is in there. The cavalry, we have wedge. So you've got special abilities. I'll select these guys again. I need to select one. I've got to go completely around it. Waiting for all the Hestati to go past. In which case, it's just easier to select them by the bottom here. Double tap on the map to make them run. Or, and this is a feature I like that you kind of see the little bit of influence sort of almost from Attila and Warhammer and stuff. As you can hold down on it. Oh no, not. When you get your unit, you can draw with them. And draw where you want them to go. That's just a single press. I just want them over there, and you can choose them to walk or run. And the unit will move to where you've told it to go. You zoom on in. See the units, take a look at those graphics. I think it looks pretty good. Again, obviously there are no graphic options in this, but I think it looks pretty good for now. On over to their starty, take a look at them. Camera flies on by very smoothly. To me, this feels like 60 FPS. Um, definitely feels faster than 30. But it does seem to run pretty darn smoothly. Pull these guys forward a little bit. Deselect, twist on round, let's go kill these guys. All my Hestati to run forward there. Belites. General. Then the map round. tell them to run over to the left there. See, now we're moving forward. AI is going to start engaging us shortly. Just going to reposition. Oh, no, actually, I think we need to pull the Velites back because we're going to get attacked. In comes the enemy cavalry. My Hestate are there. We're actually going to tell them to fire at will. See them duking it out. But, let's get my cavalry involved. The enemy, general enemy general is fleets. routing. Press forward so the spirit of his army is broken too. Put into the spearman here. Pull away cavalry. Let's get all my Hestati going up there. In the cavalry comes. Slamming on through those barbarian peasants.
Oh, and they're just going through this unit again because I've tried to tell them actually to pull through, giving that order to the unit behind. Tap and select a few Hastati and send them all in. We're chasing off units that have now since broken. In we go. Healer throw from the Hastati. My other units come though, throwing Peeler, and then they'll charge in as well. But we've broken the enemy. I think we've nearly got them all. Oh no, the enemy general's returned. Oh, we've got a unit down here. That's what we've missed. Unit of started. It's taking a bit of a pounding. Everyone else down there. Actually, that unit has broken. I kind of feel with this, you probably won't necessarily be zooming in so much because you'll be flying all over the battlefield a lot of the time. But it's just going to take me some more time to get used to the touch controls, but... Well, I say it's going to take me time to get used to them. They're not... Um, unusable. They actually make a lot of sense. We've just won there, so we can continue the battle if we want to. Get our cavalry mow the enemy down, capture more of them. There we go, enemy general either been slain or captured, or I think he's been killed. Enemy general's fallen. Lovely. Is it? Is that the unit that took it down? Yeah, oh, cool. But yeah, it's going to take me a little bit longer to get used to all those controls. But I think it's gone pretty well. So if we want to exit the battle, we can just pull three fingers down and hit exit battle. Really quick. Yep. But then we see instantly the um, victory results screen so we can see how many men we have for that unit. How many casualties inflicted, how many sustained, how many healed, experience and everything else done through our whole force there with a little scroll. And then it loads you back to the campaign map. So I think that's pretty much the basics of it. I did say I was going to potentially do a larger battle at the end of this, but actually I think what I'm going to get you guys to do is let me know in the comments section what battle scenario you would like me to fight. Um, in another video I'll do... Um, early next week for you guys, so we'll just go back to the uh, main menu because there are historical battles as well So you could vote for historical battle if you'd like um, there's no straw poll or anything like that Just let me know down in the comment section. So we've got historical battles that we could do if you want me to Or we can just set up a custom battle Siege open field battle whatever you want to see also, if you'd like to see, perhaps see the prologue and get to grips with the game by seeing that, then feel free to let me know as well. But yeah, that's where I'm going to wrap up this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, I know I've gone on a lot, but I want to just try and give you a kind of full, kind of in-depth first look at Rome Total War for iPad. Sharing my thoughts that I've had so far, you know, showing you that little battle there at the end. Um, what do you think of the controls? Do they look like they make sense? Um, hopefully, I've not made it look too confusing, but... The, the controls, for the most part, all do, do make a lot of sense. They're very simple. You know, most of the time it's just um, a single tap or a double tap and then, you know, either drag to draw your unit path of attack or double tap um, to attack for run. All the stuff is very clearly laid out as well. You know, this didn't take me, you know, any time at all to sort of instantly pick up and get stuck in. Um, and I've actually, I actually got my girlfriend to try this out who is not a Total War player at all. Um, and just see if she could understand the controls of how to move her units in a battle and everything like that. Uh, she's she's not really into strategy games and what have you, but um, she picked it up very quickly as well. Um, I would have said I would experiment on my parents to see if they could understand the controls, but they'd probably wonder what an iPad is in the first place, bless them. Anyway, that's where I'm going to wrap up this video, so big thanks to Feral Interactive for um, sharing the um, build of the game with me so that I could make this video. As I said, I'll be looking to live stream this. I'll be looking to make a 
a very much um, snappier and more concise controls video both for campaign and battles next week so keep your eyes peeled for that and if there's any specific things you'd like me to focus on then do let me know most importantly though let me know what battle do you want to see uh, either historical battle or a custom battle faction you know any different scenarios you want me to see try out see as I can get used to the touch controls a bit more and um, because you are gonna have to um, uh, you know get your get your controls down to manage your large armies but I think Feral have done a cracking job at adding as many tools as possible to aid you in controlling you know up to 20 units at a time so until next time, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Take pride on the Legion. Check out my affiliates and sponsors, XMG, Green Man Gaming, and Overclockers UK. Until next time, ciao for now.